And this little hole in the ground was the um, stone for the road, I think, down to Killabrega from the main road. It's a relatively uh, new hole anyway. All the uh, flowers and the plants have taken it back again, which is nice to see. Muted there, there's dragonflies everywhere. Plus some um, beautiful flag irises. And a Christmas tree ready to be um, used. I'm going to use a bit more height, I think. Well, today we're going to visit some old friends of mine. I've been here for a little while, they've been keep asking me to come back and visit them, so today's the day. It's a glorious summer afternoon. And we're in the wilds of Balaf, I suppose, I thought he will. Come up the Druidale track, park the car up, and we're heading to a place called Kilbrega, which is a beautiful little homestead overlooking the Sulby Valley. And we're going to visit Tom and Lisa can raid. They're very sociable individuals. Brother and sister have lived here for many years. And on the way we'll talk a little bit about what to expect down over the hill here. I am kidding you a bit really. Tom and Lee's can wait passed away many years ago. There's some of the last people to farm up in this valley. And uh, probably left here, I think, in the 50s or 60s. And um, the uh, government now own Kilabrega, although there's not much protection on it. It's been left as it was, really, more or less as it was farmed hundreds of years ago. Most of you know that Thaltyville is one of my favourite places in the LMA. It abounds in little ruins and crofts and secret little places. Completely and utterly on their own these days. I suppose I've probably visited maybe 15 little ruins over the years, somewhere in my books. Some aren't. And uh, that's probably only a tip of the iceberg of what is up here. There used to be a school and a pub and a shop, a chapel. It would have been a community. Originally this place was settled in by quails. And the story goes, according to the museum anyway, that three brothers got shipwrecked <coughs> off Jerby. And after a very rough journey, they decided if they survived this lot, they would get as far away from the sea as they could. So hence they settled up on Thalty Will. This is in the 15 or 1600s and established a, a variety of little crofts along the way. So I would imagine nearly all of the ruins up here at one time or another would have been lived in or farmed by quails. And then as they progressed out into the community they would have married outside of the quail clan and brought their own breeding stock to bear. It is a gorgeous place though, Thalty Will. I never tire of coming here, never. It's a bit of a trek to it. It's not difficult, it's probably just tiring more than hard. I've got stupid shoes on today which hasn't helped. Uh, today I think the 
protesting about the elms at St Mark's. That's what I've heard anyway. And um, although I lived at St Mark's for a lot of my early years, I think there'll be plenty of people protesting without me today. I'm sure there will be a stay of execution in those poor trees. Let's hope so. I can just hear the grasshoppers today. It's a great place to visit with the kids, for picnic and whatever you want to do really. As they say, just take photographs and leave nothing but footprints eh? A lot of buildings on this little place. Two or three houses. They were unfortunate enough to have a few uh, fires, which is a want when you've got thatch and sparks about. It's a bit windy, but the breeze is lovely and warm. There's lots of little things to video here. I'm glad I'm not limited to a quarter an hour like I used to be. It's unfortunate for you folks, you may have to sit through more than you need to. But as I've always said, you can always fast forward it, stop it, pause it, not bother with it. The choice will always be yours. So we'll go down in the yard and have a look, find someone that's a bit sheltered. Give you a little bit of info about the place and then we'll do some walking about I think. Hmm. I came here with County File about God, how many years ago, years ago I suppose. And uh, they wanted to do some sort of thing to video. They wanted to go to Craig Nish and I said I'm not going to Craig Niche, everybody goes to Craig Niche. I'll take it to somewhere different. So, February was, and we came up here. I've never done, I've, um, and, uh, I've never done much videoing before with the production team. This is just using me. But what a performance. February was freezing cold. And uh, the whole afternoon we spent filming. I don't know how much film they take, but there's only like a minute at the most on the countrywide file. And uh, so they're going to get the girl, I can't remember her name, blonde girl, nice lady, to walk over the hill and she would walk towards me. As if it um, happened every day. And I said, I've been up here many times. I've never met anybody walking towards me. I can't believe it, it sounds ridiculous, but when it was done it was alright. You know, the funny thing was they said to me, well you walk around there with your camera and pretend you're snapping away and we'll just follow you and we'll do it like that. Like some uh, B-roll they called it. I said, oh good. So, plodding around here on my knees with my camera around my neck and snapping away like a fool. I get back to the, to the um, where the guy's photo, uh, doing the video and he says uh, don't think I'm a party pooper racers but is that your lens cap that's still on your camera I thought oh my giddy I'm going to have to do it all again god first of all before we get started I'll point at some of the places that are around here and that little room over there is called Ballamish or Crunkgaru it's probably the hardest one to get to on the hillside and um, I've got a bit of history about that one sometime too. We'll go and have a visit to it. And the foreground here at Slough Manic. Home of some monks apparently. And also just around the corner you'll find some other ruins where when they were building a the dam they actually used some of these old ruins to hold dynamite. So they've got double walls inside. Right up there in the hillside just under Slough uh, Snaefell is Block Erie. Probably one of the most remote ones and at the top of the frame you can just see the cars on the mountain road. And then down here we've got the uh, outflow of the Block Erie Dam. It's 
so it makes his way down to the well, the stream makes his way down to join the Saltywell River. This little house with the lintels behind it, or the tombstones maybe. Stones they are. I brought some people here a few years ago and I convinced them that there'd been a plague in Kilabrega and they buried all the folks out here. It would have been okay if they kept me face straight, but I can't do that, can you? As the fox gloves are coming out into flower, we'll walk around. This is the uh, one of the main houses anyway. And this is the one that, uh, I think this is the last one that they left. Because this would have um, burnt down like the others. And the penalty of having thatch, as I said, it's a nightmare really, a nightmare. So we'll walk down here. Have a look inside how they used to live. Just basic two rooms, nothing more flash than that, just two rooms. And the whole life would be lived in these two rooms. Amazing. We've got such mansions these days. Now we're going to walk over towards the uh, thrashing barn. Through the garden, as is the as it would have been. So we've got quick stop and slow, and as I said, then we're going to be slow. So you can see, grand thrashing barn. Machinery is all still intact. So when I tell you about horse mills and fashing mills, this is actually some of the working gear that would have been part of it. This is quite a substantial fashion machine. It's got restrainers in the wall. And so this was never meant to be removed, this one. As I said on a few occasions, uh, most of these came from Scotland, a place called Air. And when I looked up some prices in 1860, they were 130 quid. Today that's 60 grand. I wonder where they got the money from to buy those things. And you couldn't take it with you when you moved. This was in the ground. So said when they moved, they usually took the pole with them, which is the uh, guarantee of ownership on the next farm. Those holes there would no, those holes there would probably be to let the oats go through and keep the straw back. No doubt there would have been some way of collecting the straw uh, the oats outside of there. I'm saying oats, I don't think it'd be barley up here. It definitely would be oats I think. This big cog at ground level will be coming through from underneath the ground outside. This would have been the main wheel that the horses would have driven through at 45 degree angles. And up above here you've got the various cogs and shafts doing the other bits and pieces. There'll be winnowing and thrashing and a drum to smash the ears off and another one to blow it away and something to chuck the straw out. So we'll walk around now to the other side of the horse mill. You can see the trouble they went to, they built this lovely round circular wall to support the earth. The horses walk around in relative safety. And that's the um, gantry that would have supported the, or driven the mill. There would be one or two horses, at least one anyway. Attached to this pole, round she go. All day. Thrashing the oats, they would feed her through the winter time I guess. It's a work of art really, isn't it? All the little scrolls in it. They wouldn't bother these days making all these little bits to it. But they did those days. They did. Last but not least, 
Oh, it's not last actually, it's another few little sheds I'll show you in a second. Tom and Lizzie were ahead of their time because they were the first ones up and here to have a bath installed. Quite decent today, I'm not sure about December though. This little shed's been used for storing rubbish. And uh, you may moan about it, but it must be better to put them there than they leave it lying over the fields. These from this little shed here, you can tell that it would have been thatched because of these protruding stones. Now we're just going to walk down to that gap there. Something else to show you, but I'm not going to video it. I'll show you when I get there. Well, a little square would be some sort of sheep fold or the whole sheep. Um, not sure what for, not very big, but it's obviously there for that reason. But I'm probably not very happy with my presence up here. And this is just a, sh a, a shot of a beautiful valley with the sunshine and the clouds casting shadows on the hillside. It's just beautiful. These little things I think would be calf houses, pig houses. It's on the road out towards the Salty Wolf Forest. Difficult to say what they would have been really. That's the world of Tom and Lisa Conrad. The last occupants, or no occupants up here. Anyway. Forever captured on film, eh? This little one here could have been the thigh of egg, I haven't found one. It's got all the hallmarks of one. Who knows, eh? Who knows? Pass under the sycamores. This track goes out past the quarry where they would have built, took the stone to build all those little um, stone buildings. No, this too would have been part of their garden. This deciduous trees are flourishing up here. Anyway, come with me now and I'll show you what I discovered. Now there we are. Isn't that exciting? You can see why I'm so enthusiastic about this, can't you? Two stones on the ground, planted that distance apart. Now I wonder what that would be for, eh? Well, I'm surmising, I think I'm right. This little stone, or these two stones with the grooves in them would have been a holding a grinding stone, I think, with a handle on it. And this is where they've come to sharpen their tools. And it doesn't sound much today, because you need a utility got a B and Q. But no B and Q in those days, and sharp tools meant the work and labor was so much easier. And um, this would be such a vital part of a farm to keep the tools in tipped up form. And of course, it would be out here well away from the house and all the other buildings because of the sparks. Because I found quite a few and it took me a little while to realise that it was actually to do with the fact that there would be sparks. 
Whenever you point your camera up here, there's a picture to be taken and seen. It's just delightful tonight, delightful. 